Hi! This is our uh, last video on the cryptography module and we're going to study the Haystad's uh, broadcast attack. It's a very interesting uh, different type of attack. So first we studied some simple attacks based on wrong uh, implementation of uh, RSA or on uh, some prime numbers being small or difference between them being small and on some insufficient randomness which turned out to be a problem. This is an attack from a completely different angle uh, which comes from the fact that sometimes uh, we want to send the same message uh, to many different recipients to broadcast this message and uh, if we do that not careful enough then it can be a problem someone can break our cipher so Haystad came up with an attack in case Bob sends the same message to several recipients using their public keys and it uses the fact that uh, uh, it's basically th the same message uh, and uh, it doesn't change uh, at all, it doesn't use any randomness and uh, that is key for the attack. Uh, it works in a very general case but we will consider a very simplified case as an example of how we can break uh, this code if uh, the same message is broadcasted. So let's imagine that Bob wants to send uh, the same message to Alice, Angelina and Adriana. So he has message M and he wants to send this message to all three. But of course he doesn't want for anyone to listen and he wants to send this message as a secret so instead he will use the RSA algorithm to compute uh, three ciphertexts. Uh, ciphertext C1 will be m to the power of E1 modulo N1 where N1 and E1 is the public key that Alice provides to send messages to her. C2 is equal to m to the power of E2 modulo N2 and it is different. It is uh, using a different uh, public key N2 E2 and uh, the same with the third message m to the power of E3 modulo N3. So in our simplified case we assume that all E1, E2 and E3 turn out to be equal to 3. This uh, potentially could happen and uh, what happens in this case is that C1 is equal to m cubed modulo n1, C2 is equal to m cubed modulo n2 and C3 is equal to m cubed modulo n3. So what happens next is that uh, the greatest common divisor of any two different uh, public keys is equal to 1. Well, otherwise, uh, we just learned in the previous video, if uh, some two public keys are not co-prime, we, then we can factor each of them and uh, anyway decrypt the messages. So we assume that we somehow avoided this problem. Uh, these uh, public keys don't have any common divisors, they are co-prime. As they are uh, pairwise co-prime, we can use the Chinese remainder theorem. And in particular, we're going to, to use it to construct such C that, uh, of course, this C is a remainder module of the product of these three modules between 0 and uh, N1, N2, and N3. And also, C has uh, the same remainder module N1 as C1, the same remainder module N2 as C2, and the same remainder module N3 as C3. This is not just possible, this is possible and uh, can be done using an algorithm we learned in the previous module, which is based on the extended Euclid's algorithm. So you first construct uh, the number with the required remainders modulo n1 and n2, and you get uh, some remainder modulo n1 times n2, and then using the fact that n1 and n2 is co-prime with n3, you construct another number which has the required uh, remainder modulo n1 times n2 and the required remainder c3 modulo n3 and then in the end you get a remainder modulo n1 and 2 and 3 which has a required remainders modulo n1 and 2 and n3 so if we use uh, our algorithm to construct such c then it turns out that c will be equal to m cubed modulo n1 and 2 and 3 why is that? Well, again, by Chinese remainder theorem, because C gives the same remainders modulo n1, n2, and n3 as m cubed from the above equations. And this means, as uh, n1, n2, and n3 are pairwise co-prime, that C and m cubed have the same remainder modulo of the product of these modules. Now we know that C is equal to m cubed modulo n1, and 2, and 3, and also we know that C is between 0 and n1, and 2, and 3, because C is just a remainder modulo of this product, and also m cubed is also between 0 and n1, and 2, and 3. Why is that? Well, 
Obviously it's uh, non-negative, but also M is a message sent using public keys N1, N2 and N3, so M must be less than N1, N2 and N3 just to be used in the RSA scheme. And as M is less than each of these modules, by multiplying these inequalities we get that M cubed is less than their product. So, these two numbers have the same remainders modular product N1, N2 and N3, and they are between 0 and N1, N2 and N3, so they are both remainders module of this product. And it means that these numbers are just equal, because there are no two different uh, remainders which are, which are equal. So C is equal to M cubed in the end. And then if we know C, we constructed it using a Chinese remainder theorem and Euclid's algorithm, then we can just decode M by computing the regular cube root, not just some fancy modular cube root, but just the regular cube root of an integer number C to get M. And uh, this is the way uh, hasted attack uh, works in uh, this simplified case. So we just need to apply extended Euclid's algorithm to construct number C, and uh, then we just compute the regular cube root. We can do that in uh, uh, floating point arithmetics, but then just uh, round up to the closest integer and it will turn out to be the exact message that if has, uh, that uh, uh, someone sent and if uh, intercepted the ciphertext. So broadcasting the same fixed message is a problem and uh, Heidstadt's orig original attack works uh, not just with the case when all E1, E2 and E3 are equal to 3 and when there are 3 recipients it works even with bigger and different EI and uh, with a different number of recipients if there is enough uh, recipients to uh, apply this attack. So the solution to avoid this attack uh, uh, completely is to add random padding to M before encryption. Uh, why that works? Because then it is impossible to compute M using all the ciphertext just in some deterministic way because each CI includes some random part apart from M and so there cannot be any uh, deterministic algorithm that uh, recovers the exact M out of C1, C2 and C3. So C1, C2 and C3 share some common information in the form of M but they also differ by some random uh, bits uh, which we added to M before encryption and so we cannot actually use such kind of algorithms to uh, recover M. So, general idea is uh, it's a good thing to always apply some randomness, to always leave some amount of randomness in your message before encrypting it, because it allows to avoid many, many different attacks, from the easy one with the limited uh, initial message set, uh, which we studied in the uh, beginning, to this uh, advanced hasted attack, which also is not applicable if you add enough uh, randomness to the messages before encrypting them.